Sunlam has opted for leadership continuity. The financial services provider says current CEO Paul Hanratty has agreed to extend his term. He will stay in the position until the end of 2027. Hanratty joined the Sunlam's board in 2017 and became CEO in July 2020. Some Discovery Insure clients' personal information has been compromised. The company says the breach has affected 20 clients. Signia CEO Magda Vieshika posted on X that she is one of them. Discovery has appointed forensic specialists to investigate. According to the company, an impersonator called the Discovery Insure call center, requesting the clients' policy schedules. The impersonator used personal information from historical third-party data breaches to pass Discovery Insure's identification and verification screening, and so could then access clients' pers personal details, including residential addresses, identity numbers, and details of items covered by the policies. MultiChoice expects to plunge further into the red. Africa's largest pay TV operator says its annual headline loss per share could come in at 421 cents. That's from 301 cents previously. It cited a weak macroeconomic and consumer environment and has also pointed to increased investment in Showmax along with impact of the sharp de 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 uh, depreciation in the Nigerian Naira against the US dollar. 91 CEO says he favors a government of national unity. Hendrik de Doy says that cooperation is needed and President Sir Ramaphosa must lead and not follow. The comments from the head of one of South Africa's largest asset managers come after last week's election where the ANC lost its majority. This has prompted the party to explore its options such as forming a coalition government or creating a government of national unity. Financial markets are expected to remain unsettled as the ANC explores its options, but Dudoy says markets are currently pricing in a positive outcome with a downside risk if the situation goes sideways. Gemfields is excited about the initial mineral resources estimate at its gold exploration project in Mozambique. The Color Gemstone Miner says the results are a good first step as it continues its, its exploration. But the firm has reiterated that the gold project remains outside its core focus of responsibly mining and marketing colored gemstones. And so it's not part of Gemfields' long-term strategy. The company plans to further understand the resource and then look for a purchaser or suitable partner for the project. In international news, Novo Nordisk is facing the prospect of intensifying competition in the Chinese market where drug makers are developing at least 15 generic versions of its diabetes drug Ozempic and a weight loss treatment WeGovi. Here's more insight in this package report. Novo Nordisk, maker of blockbuster drug Ozempic, may face serious competition in China. Drug makers are now developing 15 generic versions of its popular diabetes drug and weight loss treatment WeGovi. That's according to clinical trial records. The Danish company had high hopes that the drug would boom in the promising Chinese market, which is estimated to have the highest number of obese and overweight people in the world. In 2021, Ozempic won approval from China, and last year Novo Nordisk saw sales of the drug there double to almost $700 million. It's expecting Wigovi to be approved this year. But the patent on semaglutide, the active ingredient in both medicines, expires in China in 2026, which is far ahead of the expiry in other key markets like Japan, Europe and the US. Novo is in a legal fight over the patent in China, but an adverse court ruling could mean the company loses its semaglutide exclusivity even sooner. Those circumstances have drawn several of the country's drug makers to the fray. Records show at least 11 semaglutide drug candidates from Chinese firms are in the final stages of clinical trials. And one company said it has developed a drug that has, quote, similar clinical efficacy and safety as a Zempic. In April, it applied for approval for sale, which it has said could come in the second half of 2025, with plans to sell the drug the following year. That's unless Novo loses its patent battle sooner. A Novo spokesperson said it, quote, welcomes healthy competition and was awaiting a court decision on its patent case. 
And we're still in election season and today voting in the Netherlands has started as the 27 EU member states go to the polls to vote in a new European Parliament. Here's our report in Darling Lechela with further detail. Darling. That's right, Zinati. Now, the EU Parliament election started today and will end on Sunday this week. 350 million EU citizens can head to the polls to participate. And joining us with more is DW correspondent Chibonda Chimbelo. Chibonda, thanks so much for joining us today. Now, as we get started, just fill us in on how you expect these elections to go. Thanks for having me. Well, the EU Parliament elections are the world's second biggest democratic elections after India's. Around 450 million EU citizens can vote. But while election posters have been up for weeks, the interest in the elections isn't very high. Here in Germany last week, a leading poll showed that around a quarter of voters are not planning to vote. And the fear is that if fewer people vote, the Eurosceptic far-right AFD party could perform well. However, the party has been hit with many scandals in recent weeks, and it was even kicked out of the European Parliament right-wing party group. Now, at the European level, we have seen a stronger alliance between far-right leaders from Italy and France, Georgia Maloney and Marine Le Pen. And in France, Le Pen's far-right RN is leading in the polls ahead of French President Macron's Renaissance Party. Now, what topics will uh, voters be looking at in particular here, uh, Chibonda? Well, if we look at the election campaigns, it has been dominated by security and defense matters. And that, of course, is due to the ongoing war in Ukraine. But across all the 27 EU member states, opinion polls show that economic and social policy will influence how people cast their ballots. And what is interesting is that migration doesn't appear to be playing a decisive role for voters in most countries. Now that is despite the focus on the topic in politics and media. The economy appears to be front and center. The post-pandemic economic recovery here in Europe has been bumpy, and that is largely due to the fallout from the war in Ukraine. And of course, governments are trying to raise defense spending at a time when their economies aren't doing that well. Now, that has meant that spending for social services and welfare has not been rising. And of course, that is something that has left many voters feeling dissatisfied, especially given the fact that we saw record inflation levels in Europe last year. Now, before I let you go, let's just reflect on what the outgoing parliament actually achieved. Well, it hasn't been an easy five years, that is certain. Britain left the EU at the beginning of 2022. Then, of course, came the COVID-19 pandemic, and Russia's ongoing war in Ukraine started in early 2022. Now, all of that was unprecedented. And despite these challenges, the EU Parliament did manage to get some things done. In 2019, the European Commission unveiled the Green Deal, a plan to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. Brussels also came up with legislation aimed at reining in the power of big tech. As of last year, online platforms have had to actively police harmful content. And in 2024, the EU Parliament came up with the world's first AI regulation. And this year, European lawmakers, of course, were also able to reach a compromise on migration and asylum policy after a decade of debate. Now, of course, voters have a chance to give their verdict of what they make of the Parliament's work in the last five years. Chibonda, let's leave it there. Thanks so much for your time and those insights. That was Chibonda Chimbelu from Deutsche Welle.